The reason why I left Twitter is I was experiencing it as a space where completely normal people were incentivized to behave like psychopaths. Okay. Hey, Mike. How are you, sir? I'm good. Thank you. We've been together for an hour and a half, but (laughs) let's say hello again. Uh, And hello to all the the watchers, the viewers. Um, So today we're going to talk about, I think, a really important question. Mike, you flagged this video for me. I don't don't watch either of these two viewers or the the discussants enough that we're going to look at in a second. But they seem to be on to a really important question, which is how do we solve big problems? Not at the individual level. That's a sort of a slightly different topic, but big problems at the societal level. War genocide, refugee crises, climate change, homelessness, inequality, things that really make our society worse off, um, which are, you know, deeply pathological things that um, we all probably widely agree are are bad things that we need to figure out how to reduce the severity of. Today, I think we're going to listen to two different perspectives on how to, how to handle, how to address big problems. Um, one is from Russell Brand and the other is from Sam Harris. Again, I don't listen enough to these two, so I don't, I don't, I don't know enough about some of the previous things they've said. But um, from what I understand so far, they sort of they offer sort of two very different perspectives that we can try to make sense of and navigate, and hopefully help you also make sense of. So, um, Mike, did, before we watch this video, do you want to did you want to jump in with anything, or should we just go towards? The yeah, video? I think one of the aspects we're trying to do is to comment on these giant names in the world as the conversation shifts from mainstream media and our traditional information channels, people like Russell Brand and Sam Harris are huge figures in the information space. Mm. So it's important to understand what these people are talking about. They have millions of listeners and followers. So I think that's just a side note as to why this is important. Mm. Uh, And they're both incredibly articulate human beings and in return, agree or disagree with them. Right. They're like, yeah, they're, yeah. You, they we may need be, to engage with at least in, yes. conversations. Yeah. And one of the wonderful things about the internet and the new information space is that it is a long form conversation in mm-hmm. which yeah. ideas can be flushed out. We can think about things, we can discuss them. And these two do a pretty good job at role modeling what that looks like. And then, yeah, going back to the original point of the video of what is the balance between our individual agency and psychology and how that impacts the world and how does that interact with the systems that we all interact with and try to manage collectively. Mm -hmm. And I think, as you sort of said, there's two different perspectives here. And maybe I'll say one more thing. So if, if, you know, if we are concerned about a particular big problem out there, hopefully this, this discussion flags different ways to think about addressing that. So if we are deeply worried about, economic inequality um, or the home or homelessness, what do we actually, how should we start to even begin to address that? Yes. Um, yes. Or polarization or, or war. What do we, what do, how do we even get started on such big problems? Yeah. All right, let's do it. It's a relative no, knowledge that, of course, that of have course. to be solved but, on their own terms. But to use your own argument, if you can undo the not of self, then surely you will acknowledge that all that takes place on the material plane in this shared cultural space, which is nothing more than an amalgam of our shared cultural and personal experiences, the marketplace of ideas, the media meteorology of all of these colliding entities, all of which have passed through the consciousness of individuals <laughs> just the same as you and I, be they historic or be mm-hmm. they present now. This is our shared experience. Uh, uh, to quote uh, the, 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 Oscar, the famous quote uh, around Schindler there, he who changes one life changes the world entire. If we begin to change the uh, prakriti, the prima materia of reality, consciousness itself, we can, of course, adapt and evolve systems. They will have to reflect those changes in reality. Even you are talking about a shared hysteria when it comes to the phenomena of Donald Trump. Oh, in spite of all this, he didn't do a peaceful transition. Yet somehow he reaches deep down into the spiritual cojones of pretty near 50% of Americans and they don't give a shit. Now, if we can't find a way of hacking, bypassing 
this constant conflagration, we are doomed. Otherwise, what is it? 50% are going to subjugate the other 50%? Is that the solution? Not going to happen, is it? We're going to have a civil war? Are we ever going to have an election in your country again that doesn't end with the other side going, oh, it was Russia gate, oh, it was stolen? That's just, that's just the deal now. So we have to find something else. Where else is it going to come from? This is a time to revivify the spiritual traditions and to note that all of these traditions emerge out of cultures where they believe in a deep unitive experience that what you experience and of course there's no way of proving this and i'm sure that you as a sort of a uh, i don't mean this offensively materialist rationalist will say that your inner peace is a contrivance of neurological stuff that's highly personal and just within your personal skin and i would offer what you experience in that meditative peace is what i experience in that meditative peace there is a true unity and from that place from our shared humanity the same way as skeletally you and i are more or less the same in spite of our superficial cutaneous differences we can find some archetypal unity to share together to build upon now i know it doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to become experts in building new nuclear power stations or whatever particular solution you or I might think we should pursue. But it does mean we might be able to establish a crucible of good intent based on that. Otherwise, what is the point? Personal peace while the world yeah. burns. Um, okay, so, so summarize that. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I was thinking. So, so the challenge of Brand's view is one, it's, it's not always easy to follow what he's saying, right? Yeah, There's a yeah. lot of interesting verbiage. Yeah. And, <laughs> He's articulate, but it's, 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 you know, I, I, I guess this is maybe the second time I've heard this just in the last 20 minutes. So the second time it makes more sense. So if you have to go back and listen to it again, um, you know, that, that makes total sense. So I think if his perspective and, and Mike, tell me what you think of this is if you're going to, if we're going to solve problems at the systems level, so issues of political pol polarization, issues of war between states, civil war within a state or a society, repression, uh, you know, discrimination of all forms, racism, uh, sexism, every ism that we would be opposed to. How do you do that? Brand says we need to recenter the spiritual meditative transitions that focus on individual level healing. We need to make people at the individual level strong, compassionate, well-intended individuals who are able to, what he says, undo the knot of self. Mm. And once you do that, then he suggests some of these problems might even, will be, will be more able to come up with effective solutions or the problems don't even emerge in the first place. So homelessness might not be a thing. Inequality might not be a thing when people at the individual level are deeply compassionate about everyone around them. They're more willing to share and to be emotionally committed to the well-being of of their neighbors of their of their community um you might he might also say truly healed str strong compassionate individuals at, from the at, you know at their core wouldn't necessarily be not to make this political but trump supporters or attractive attracted to you know what some might say are sort of demagogic authoritarian political leaders that only makes society more toxic and sort of creep us towards authoritarianism. So his solution, just the, the last thing I'll say is that his solution for big social problems are return to spirituality, return to meditation, heal yourself. So the ways in which you interact with the world around you, the people around you becomes productive and positive for the most part. Is that a fair description of what you think he's saying what else did you sort of does that make sense to you what else are you sort of pulling out of what you've heard so far yeah i think that makes sense to me i think i need to call out my own naivete in this where the name of this channel this starts with me so that is the ethos mm -hmm. here and russell brand is a 12-stepper and i'm a 12-stepper and so i think i share that sense of personal responsibility i'm responsible to change the world change myself all that stuff i think is has merit and is obviously in our collective brains for a reason where I'm, I'm maybe I'll play a little devil's advocate here, here. before, sorry, yeah. before you, before we yes. critique, tell me a bit more about, there's two things you mentioned. So then you yourself, so starts with me, you came up with that name. I, I, I love the name. I think it's incredibly empowering. Where, why would, why, how did you even formulate a view like Russell Brands as he's articulating now? How does AA think about individual responsibility? Where, like, what's the logic of these 
right. ideas and, and why, why did they become attractive to you? I think, I think Russell Brand mentioned it, but all of our spiritual traditions really focus on the individual mind because that's where you wake up every morning and that's where you are all the time. You're in your own mind. So we have to start there. And for people that really suffer or struggle with addiction and those kind of things, we lose that connection and we either blame everyone else for our problems or avoid facing them ourselves. And until we take responsibility for our behavior, nothing changes. So that's the main point there. And that is a spiritual truism. AA just articulates it differently for modern people to understand, which is a lovely thing. And to play that devil's advocate piece, I think, yes, that is all true. And human endeavors are complicated and difficult. And what I've been thinking a lot about lately is I'm still, as Yuval Harari, Noah Harari would say, a storytelling chimpanzee. So my biological reality takes over my rational loving mind so quickly and easily. And I think at some point, Sam Harris says something, you've got to be fucking Gandhi to act well on Twitter or something like that. So there is this you know, Russell Brand presents it in this such a genuine, loving way. If we just change all of our consciousness, then the world will transform into this loving blah, blah, blah. There's just way too much of a gap there. Human nature and our animalistic evil is still such a part of our reality that it's not that simple. Yes, it's a great start. Yes, it's important. And we ought to do it. Although at the same time, how do we honor and acknowledge that we are crazy animals that do crazy things all the time. And that I find uh, is often a missing component of this. So, okay. So there's a, there's a lot there. Maybe we'll, we'll jump to Sam Harris okay. in a second to see what his response is, but just to make, to make sure I understand your view. So you, on, you're generally attracted to the idea of personal agency, yeah. especially in the realm of say of, of addiction and, and mental health of taking responsibility for seeking the help you need for addressing some of the ways in which we, or some of our thought patterns that might not be productive for ourselves and for the others around us. So in that sense, you believe in sort of strong sense of personal responsibility. Yes. But at the same time, you're suggesting that to solve some of these bigger problems, it's not enough that we solve ourselves. We probably need something else. We're not even sure what that else is just yet, but it's not enough for you to feel good about how you're thinking, your cognitive processes, your emotions. It's not enough for Mike to get in control of his addictive behaviors. There's more that that society, that humanity needs to do is what you're suggesting. And, and I think you're suggesting that because we have aspects of our human nature which are incredibly dark and those are not things that are easily changed and they're going to pop up from now. You know, we can't truly heal ourselves. It's sort of like an always a constant battle to to push aside, to suppress some of the darker sides of, of what humanity can do, um, what all of us are capable of, all the evil we're all capable of. So in that sense, because of that issue that you can never really cure yourself, mm -hmm. we can never cure your consciousness, we need not just individual level healing, but systems level healing or systems level solutions. Yeah, or incentives. To, or incentives to keep the darker sides of our human nature down. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that's a good segue to Sam Harris because I think he okay. articulates that. In and a just to way. point that, out, yeah, so I don't for forget, um, in AA, they do have a solution to that. So there's the 12 steps. They say the 12 steps are to prevent suicide mm. and the 12 traditions are to prevent homicide. So there is a, a collective framework for group cohesion. And that, I think, is that system level idea. We need norms and ways of interacting that keep the group cohesive and maybe right. we can get back to that later but right i and think so, that's what sam is pointing to here and those community norms are what would be i guess categorized as like systems level yes, yes, solutions yes, yes, not yeah, what yeah. brand would be arguing for which yeah. is individual yeah um but brand would have a response to what sam's okay so let's yeah. let's see what what sam harris has to say okay no, no. So, so I, I think there are two levels, at least two levels on which we have to address this, these existential problems, right? And one is the individual level. And, and the other is the, a, the level that you have addressed at various points here of systems and their consequences. And these are, di these are fundamentally different, which is to say that no matter how good you get at playing the individual game of untangling your problems and, and untying your knots 
right? Again, you could, you could spend 20 years in a cave and come out, you know, radiantly happy and filled with compassion and just having nothing but good intentions for the world. And yet all you have, uh, you have not, you have not done anything that necessarily has much greater significance until you can interface with a, with a system level and make change at that level. And the reason why the systems are so important, and I, I would argue that the, the greatest ethical and political changes we're going to make are going to be at the system level, because what we have, what we need are systems where the, the systems that make it easier and easier for ordinary conflicted people to behave better and better, to behave more and more like saints. And what we have are systems very much of the time that are so imper- perversely incentivized that you essentially have to be a saint to behave like a normal human being, right? Uh, it, t- I mean, it takes social media, it takes something like Twitter or what used to be known as Twitter. The reason why I left Twitter is I was experiencing it as a space where completely normal people were incentivized to behave like psychopaths. I mean, I would, I would look at my Twitter feed and I would, I would, I would, I recognized, and it took me way too long to recognize this, but I recognized after some years that I was staring into a funhouse mirror where people were showing me their most grotesque faces. And I just knew there couldn't be that many psychopaths in the world, but I was seeing psychopath after psychopath in my Twitter feed, you know, coming from the left, coming from the right, the most toxically dishonest behavior. Uh, it was just gaslighting and insanity. Um, and I, I recognized that this was having an effect on me. I didn't want to see, I, I didn't want, I didn't want this, this false advertisement on an hourly basis to be getting into my head where I was get, I was forming an image of humanity that I actually believe was inaccurate, right? But yet people were behaving terribly in ways that they never would behave in person, right? I, I, I cause I knew it. The reason why I knew it for sure is that I had met some of these people in person, right? I had dinner with some of these people and yet they're professionally behaving like psychopaths because of the incentives that Twitter w- w- was delivering to them. So my point is Twitter's a system, you know, among many systems, social media is a system. And what we need, you know, we need a, in, in this case, we need a system of communication that is making it easier and easier for even normal people to have truly enlightened and enlightening conversations where the, where the wisdom is built into the system layer, right? We have the opposite of that. We have the corruption and the dishonesty and the bad incentives built into the system layer where you basically, you have to be, you know, fucking Gandhi not to be an asshole on Twitter, at least some of the time. Right. And so that's uh, the, the answer to your question, no matter how good you get at the meditation game, privately and personally, no matter how ethical you get privately and personally, you, society is still going to be at the mercy of bad systems. And we have to, so we have to, you know, I, I, we have to pay, play both games. We, you, the reason why that you play the individual game and, and commit so much, so much time and attention to that is because it is the closest point of contact to the difference between happiness and suffering in your case. When you wake up in the morning at four in the morning and are, are, are the prisoner of your thoughts, right? There is no, there's, there's no, not only is, is the system not going to help you, your friends can't even help you. Your family can't help you. You are alone in the privacy of your own mind, right? You are, all of us are in solitary confinement all the time with respect to our own mind. And only, only a technique of uh, like meditation that allows you to, to break the spell of your identification with thought can help you there. And that help does does play out in, in how you are in the rest of your life. But again, it's not going to solve our system level problems if, if millions of us start. So what do you so this is the response. OK, yeah. so Sam, I want to hear I want, I'll say one thing just to frame it. Sam Harris is, is sort of articulating it like a nuanced perspective. It's not in opposition to individual individual level change and meditation and organizing your thoughts and healing yourself to be better out in the world. He's suggesting that in the absence of systems level reforms, like the ways in which uh, Twitter's algorithms work, or uh, to use an example, he's, he doesn't talk about the ways in which international law is uh, described and enforced 
those things are the major sort of needle movers when it comes to addressing the social, the, the problems we're trying to solve for. So if it's toxic political discourse on social media, the solution is not meditation, but altering the algorithms that incentivize certain kinds of posts over others. If the problem is war we're trying to solve for, then we'd have to think about, well, what's the, what's the nature of international law? How is, how is war regulated and to what extent are those laws enforced by you know the international community the, the united nations the leading powers in this world meditation won't get us out of the problem of interstate war or civil war meditation won't get at us get us out of the incentive to post really toxic things because it gets us more clicks and more subscribers and more money as a result um that would be sam harris's argument what what do you think of it? Does that make, does that summary make sense to you? Is that right? And what do you think? Yeah, I think it's important to acknowledge just how complicated all of this is. And we are human beings in imperfect societies trying to figure it all out. I think that's also part of what he's maybe alluding to or what comes up for me. And then I think one piece that I don't talk about enough, where are examples of this effective approach to common problems. Where are those things happening? How have we done that thus far? I guess I'm a little biased, but the 12 traditions of AA provide an, uh, a model of that. Or perhaps other, I mean, our legal system is our best attempt at that. So within all of this, again, I go back to this, we are animals, we have our shortcomings, we have made tremendous progress and it's important not to forget that. So how do we then move the needle forward? I would also, I guess I am biased to the personal side of it. It goes back to that quote, you can't solve today's problems with today's thinking. So how do we change our thinking? Well, we met, learn to meditate. We learn to be more patient. We learn to be more compassionate and understanding. But also I think we learn to honor our anger more and honor our dark side more, which they don't really talk about here. I guess they talk about the outcome of the dark side, but I really do think that there's a blind spot in our collective approach to these problems of we are angry homicidal maniacs at times, and we do have this dark side. And so how would we integrate that into this? I don't really know. I'm just thinking out loud and I'll, I'll probably stop there. So, okay. So, um, right. How do we solve the problem of what you're suggesting is the sort of the, the dark aspects of our human nature? So this has been this is something that, you know, Western and non-Western philosophers have grappled with yeah. for a long time. So if you've read like Thucydides and if you read Hobbes and, and many others, they've thought about, well, how do we, you know, human nature is dark. How do we set up societies? This is mainly the work of Thomas Hobbes, um, a 16th century English philosopher who said, how do we get people to live decently together? Without society, Hobbes said, in the, in the quote-unquote state of nature, he said it's, it's, it's brutal, life is short, nasty, um, everyone is insecure, everyone is out to kill each other because everyone is so worried about their survival and their existence. Um, no meditating, in his view, gets you out of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He says if you're going to get humans to cooperate and live decently with one another, you need what he would describe as a leviathan, like an overarching, strong governmental authority to enforce laws, to um, ensure that people aren't killing one another. So you need a system in place that is strong. You need a government in place that is strong and feared and respected to keep people in line. And this is sort of where the systems level yeah. argument comes from, that to influence how people behave and interact with one another, you need the right kinds of laws. You need the right kinds of laws to be enforced. You need the right kinds of incentives. And this is what Sam Harris is, is suggesting. You know, if you think about various human rights and various things that we now are deemed to be so central to our societies, like freedom of speech, freedom of speech on, on one hand is like a moral good. Like, yes, people should be able to say what they want. And that's something that we would deem to be just like an, something ethical. But it's also a tool, like a strategic tool meant to solve a specific problem. If, if people aren't able to express themselves, they might be more likely to exp I mean, sorry, express themselves with words 
knowing that they won't be punished for it, they're, they might be more likely to express themselves through violence. Yes. So how do you suppress societal level violence? How do you reduce the chance of civil war and societies rip, ripping themselves apart? Is you allow people to think and, and express themselves freely and to associate freely. So that would be an example of a systems level solution to a, a problem of, you know, potential violence between civilians or, or community members. Now, Brand has a response to this argument about where systems level change comes from, right? So maybe we'll go, I don't know if you wanted to jump okay. in on the last thing, but. No, that's a guy was sort of, we had a little bit, not lost, but. Okay. But that, what can I, that last what, thing what can you said helped. So where I think it hasn't been acknowledged is underlying these meditative traditions or these spiritual traditions is a very strong moral and ethical code of conduct. Mm -hmm. And it has been argued that, and I think this is true, our Western civilization is built on these moral and ethical frameworks. And our legal system is built on that. And in modern times with the death of God and all that, we've, we've lost our connection to those moral goods, those moral and ethical goods. And I think that's maybe something missed here is those are predicated on honesty, dignity, humility, responsibility, service. Like those are all the things that contribute to a cohesive system. If we're all acting, well, our system is based on those things generally, but we're all individually so disconnected from those things. Young people don't learn about them and to go on in that way. But so the system is built upon fundamental ethics and values and morals that we don't teach each other very well anymore, perhaps. Right. So this would be, okay. So um, just to back up a tiny yeah. bit, the systems level way of thinking about problems focuses on namely laws and policies, right? To solve a problem, we need to change the laws and policies that address that problem or are inadvertently contributing to yeah. it. The individual level way of solving a problem is healing your own personal ethical code regulating your own emotions, feeling better about your life so you can go out into the world and act more respectfully and with more dignity and, and more compassion towards others you encounter. What you just articulated, Mike, is I think what we're going to see in a second is Brand's response to Harris, right? Sam Harris says to solve problems, we need policy and legal changes, right? How Twitter is run. Policy needs to change there in order to encourage and incentivize good behavior, Gandhi-esque behavior mm -hmm. online preventing us from being assholes. Brand is going to say what you just said, which is to get those legal changes, those policy changes, the individuals need to change first because who makes those changes? It's individuals who abides by those policies and laws are individuals and hurt, hurt individuals, hurt other people mm -hmm. and hurt individuals um, don't follow good ethical modes of conduct, even if they're reflected in policy and in law. So um, maybe we'll go to, okay, to Russell sure. Brandon. We and don't see. even learn those things either, which is interesting. Um, maybe some people do, but okay, yep. let's play. Well, there are there is actually some data to suggest that it will, funded by the David Lynch Foundation in Chicago. And I will I won't send you those studies because when this ends, I'll right. bloody well forget this happened. But Sam, now listen, you beautiful man. This is what I'm no. saying is the perhaps the reason that these esoteric traditions have always existed from the Rishis to the Sufis to the saints is because they intuit and perhaps even experience that subject subjectivity can be a portal to a universal experience. But this transcendence of self that gives us relief from the incarceration of the ego, from the uh, enchilade of ever caroming thoughts that become unbearable, r ricocheting off the walls of the ego, this can be undone through these practices, perhaps because we access an mm. ulterior power. Curious to me that each tradition has its own version, be it, be it via the mantra or the breath, a way out. The only way out is in. It's curious, too, that these uh, traditions often accrue moral and ethical principles that find perennial truth. And this perennial truth on a pragmatic mm. level, Sam, on a pragmatic level, we should believe in this in a, on a pragmatic level. We shouldn't we should apply 
the rigor of investigation mm. and the zeal of faith to what we discover in those spaces. Because what you said uh, about that's the only place that can find you peace, you know, uh, where you can find peace and sucker is no with a double C O U R, not K E R, uh, suck, peace and sucker is in that intimacy. That sem semantics aside is no different from what any one that believes in God would tell one another. There within you, there, mm. I there is the deep imminence. There is the imminent and transcendent. That peculiar paradox that plays out between waves and particles plays out within you. There down in the Vedas, we find in poetics that which could never be tracked through materialistic observation, for we do not have the instruments when it comes to the apparently external world. But within there are solutions. Now, I believe, I have to believe that this will map onto reality before reality surely is a projection of our faith and belief. If it comes to design or culture or music, all things conceived of and constructed in this space that can be a personal hell or a private heaven can be projected out with via, via the will, via the will. You can't, you can will yourself to do many things, but you can't will yourself to will. And I feel that if personally and individually we endeavor in good faith to find this new resource, this accessible and often ignored latent resource, we can solve precisely the problem that you and I have been talking around. How do we get beyond these silos? How do we overcome this cultural cynicism? How is How do we get beyond this cavalcade of my experts versus your experts, my flag versus your flag? By acknowledging that we are all an expression of one unitary force. And if we, if we want to neglect that conclusion, then all we are going to do is sit on the fireside of Armageddon and just sort of say, well, I was right. No, I was right. And that doesn't seem like a nice way to go out. I mean, I've got kids. Mm. Mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, I think in a convoluted way, Russell Brand there is saying <laughs> systems reflect individual views. It's an aggregation or his term, an amalgamation of all the things us as individuals think. Mm -hmm. So Twitter is a, is a reality that reflects our beliefs and faiths and our ideas yeah. about the world. Although just to quibble about that, Twitter is uniquely, social media is uniquely set up that it reflects our neurotic impulsive reactions to triggering information. So it, it reflects a particular aspect of our re internal realities, but it's very narrow in its expression of that internal experience. So it's really just a, a an, an insanity machine. So it doesn't reflect our compassion very often. It doesn't reflect our uh, cohesive nature of interactions that leads to common goods. It's a it's a insanity machine. Okay, so why why does why does Twitter um or social media whatever platform reflect some of these bad things? Harris says it's the incentive structure. It's yeah, how right, the right. how it's designed system, and yeah. what it pulls out. What is going to get you attention? Yeah. and in the short term, make you feel good, and then want you to do more of that. Russell Brand says it reflects these bad things because we're not cured individuals. We're we are those things you just yeah. said. We're yeah. we're worried. We're anxious. We're insecure. We're angry. So is it the Twitter algorithm? Or is it the internal chaos, the individual the stuff that's going inside our prisons of solitary confinement? Yeah, that's a that's the source of the problem. Okay, yeah, one. So that's at least the debate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the incentive structure of it all is not so. Social media platforms are not built with that ancient tradition of a moral way of being to create collective cohesiveness. Mm -hmm. The incentive is not that. Right. Wh whatever they say it is, it's not that clearly. So it is a reflection of a neurotic need for attention. And whatever gets that neurotic attention rises to the top in some sense. It's not always neurotic attention, of course. But so the incentive of it is clearly disconnected from this moral and ethical framework of social cohesion that we've tried to piece together over s millennia. Yeah. And I, I think, I think that point flags something that's also important here. So Russell Brand's view of, we have to emphasize the individual one, one could argue, or one could critique that perspective based on the idea that an emphasis on the individual distracts us from the real source of repression and 
evil in our society, which is, you know, in this case, maybe the big tech platforms mm -hmm. um, that incentivize to act in certain ways. So while brand is saying, you know, you, the solution is go meditate more, go deal with your own stuff. While we're meditating, all the powerful actors in our society that create these laws and policies that we think are so problematic are sort of free to do it wherever they want. <laughs> yeah. So we, we focus more so on, oh, it's the problem with my Twitter engagement is me, as opposed to, well, maybe the problem is also the owners of this company, right. the people who design the inner workings of it, those who you know make policy on, on health, on economics, on peace and security. Maybe that's... So often, so so those who emphasize the individual are often criticized on the grounds that they're actually distracting us from the real source of oppression right, right, right. in our society, which is the big, powerful actors out there—the corporations, the governments, the the institutions that have lots of money uh, to wield their influence. So that's, I mean, agree or disagree with that perspective, but that's a, a, one thing to think about: where should we sort of be? Who should we be focusing on? Those activists on the streets on on a whole host of issues are often saying, I don't need to deal with myself. You need to start dealing with your policies, which are causing so much harm. That's yeah, more of a yeah, systems level yeah, yeah. approach to problems. And I think we're all trying to figure this out together. I, one of the thoughts that came up is, as a species, our number one priority still is reproduction and protecting our offspring mm. in some sense. So this is all fine and dandy in some ways, but going back to that, what is the human nature and incentives? We are still totally influenced by survival. Mm -hmm. So all this nice and, stuff- And reproduction. And reproduction, yeah. thank you, yeah, yeah. So it's like, who the fuck cares? If, <laughs> if a billion of us die tomorrow, mm -hmm. the species will still continue. That, I just, I don't know how to square that per se, but I do think that is part of this missing acceptance of we're still very much driven by our biological need to stay alive as mm -hmm. a species. So who cares if we fight all the time, as long as we're still reproducing, that's okay. So maybe there's, it would be interesting to hear sort of a evolutionary psychologist or biologist or whatever, like a, someone like that give their sense as to what this is all about and how that reflects these interactions. Right. So that's a bit of a side note, but going back to there is a balance between, I don't think we're trying to have an answer, right? We're mm. just trying to discuss these things yeah. and, and shed light on to, you know, huge figures discussing it. And my take would be, I am skewed to the individual side of things. Although in order to have collective systems change, those systems need to rest on an ethical and moral framework that wants what's best for us. And I do think our legal system is our best attempt at that so far. Mm -hmm. And here we are. And, and social media has come along and smashed all this to pieces. And we need to try to address it there. What are you going to do uh, for lunch today? What are you going to do when you wake up in the middle of the night? As was said, yeah. it does matter that we focus on our individual psyches, no doubt. As Sam said, that's where you experience joy and suffering primarily. So if you can tango, tango with that and start to expand from there into your family and society or workplace or community, that's my take on the interplay between those two things. Awesome. I think that that's a powerful statement in favor of the starts with me. I think taking individual responsibility approach. So yeah, thanks. Should we just stop? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Mike. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.